Okay, welcome to the Osera Community Meeting, the Osera Community VA Pals Working Group Meeting for Wednesday, March 7th, 2018. I am not your host, Rick Marshall. I'm just a member of the team. I'm used to saying I'm the host on these calls, but uh, but not on these calls, I'm not. Uh, I am just a member of the team, and I have been working on things just like the rest of the people have been, and the thing I've mostly been working on is um, improving the way that we do the parsing inside of the form processor, which we use to um, read in the core uh, raw HTML templates, and then we go through and we, we edit them for the appropriate connection, talking about who the user is and who the patient is that's been selected. And, and based on whether that patient has previous data, we fill that data in, we pull it from our graph and we insert it into the form. And then the resulting edited form is what's actually presented when you connect. So I've been, I've been working on that. And I and Linda and of all people, my sister, have been working on uh, tr creating unit tests uh, for the, the parts that I've been working on. So to that end, um, my demonstration is less visual than most. Um, I'm just going to show uh, the unit tests that have been created. For those that don't know, uh, OSERA certification, which is which is what this software will eventually be going through, um, has four different levels. Uh, at level one, there aren't any unit tests. At level two, there are some unit tests. At level three, there must be at least 50% code coverage by unit tests. And at level four, there must be at least 90% code coverage. Why not 100? Well, getting that last extra couple of percentage points is um, often a more work than it's worth. So, um, so with that in mind, uh, allow me to demonstrate two bodies of unit tests that we have so far for this software. There are about five chunks of code in here. And uh, two of them now have unit test libraries. So ch ch chunk of code number one is the mumps advanced shells um, string data type library uh, which is evolving it is much larger than what you're going to see here but most of it doesn't have unit tests and isn't being used by this project so it's still um, you know sitting in our repository elsewhere but uh, what we have here is the is the tools that are directly applicable to this project um, or and or that have been developed for it specifically uh, and uh, and the unit tests that cover it so if we run uh, m unit we see that at present, and it's still, we, there's still more to come, um, but at present we have 90% code coverage. And the, the truth is, if we put all of our pieces together, we're a little bit more than that. Um, so that's out of the out of the string library. Um, for those who haven't used MUnit before, you can scroll back up and see um, subroutine by subroutine, which ones are covered and which ones aren't, and how many of the lines in them are covered, and so forth. Uh, if you want to actually see the unit test being run, you could do percent TSUT, and um, you see that we have 322 tests. So this lists what all the tests are and how long they took to execute, um, which is a surprisingly short amount of time. I mean, granted, they are just string library things, and so they go pretty fast. But still, not one of them took even a nanosecond, which is, well, microsecond, which is a little disturbing. Um, I'm sure they took some nanoseconds, but no microseconds. So that's that's uh, body one that, that I've been working on this past month, and, and Linda and Jennifer. And then body number two, is for the uh, web form library, the Mumps Advanced Shell web form library. And um, this is largely uh, George's work. And I've been in there fiddling and editing and refactoring at his request. Um, and that's where I've been inserting calls to some of the new uh, string parsing tools. So if we start with our coverage, uh, we will see different results because there's a lot of code in here. Um, so out of the 794 lines that make up percent %wf, um, only 25% uh, of them are covered. And I haven't fully gone through and done the, the full RIC treatment of refactoring and, and um, white space and so forth. So the number of lines will actually grow a bit uh, by the time this is released, even even setting aside all the additional features we're gonna add. Uh, but 25% is pretty good for to start with here. Um, and the, the, the main thrust here was um, uh, the HI, the input tools, um, and uh, and the associated unit tests and percent WFUTHI. If we look at the tests themselves um, in percent WF, uh, we see it's a it's a smaller list. It doesn't cover as much ground because this is new, right? As of this week, none, none of these existed before this week. The percent WF tools. That's that's all. That's all brand new. So these are these are the tools that are there. Uh, the, the, the unit tests that are there so far. 
Now, what I would love to see if he were on the call, which I don't think he is, I'd love to talk to Joel or Sam about something in particular here, which is um, we have discovered what might be a bug in um, MUnit, or it might be a user error. I'm fully prepared to, to, to believe that it's a user error. Uh, if we, and I'm just gonna show it to you real quick so that the, we, can, we can talk about it. If we do cover a percent TSUT, one of the routines in the list is percent TSUT itself. Right, so I'm running the unit test routine that calls mUnit and tells it to run the unit test described by percent %tsut, which among other things lists other unit test routines, which are these ones here, like so. But it also includes two subroutines of its own, one of which is the one that runs and calls mUnit, which counts as covered, and the other of which is the cover subroutine, which calls coverage at percent uh, 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 UT to say, I would like you to run a code coverage analysis. So even though the main unit test subroutine counts as being covered because I ran it, the main code coverage subroutine, which I am covering, which I am running in the course of presenting, producing this report, somehow is excluded from coverage. So I thought, well, is there a way to work around that bug? There's a feature in MUnit where you can say, I'd like you to exclude the subroutine, just ignore it, it's not part of the, so I tried putting cover of percent TSUT in there and nothing happened, the cover didn't do anything. So I'm probably misusing the feature for excluding subroutines. Um, so maybe there's two bugs or maybe there's no bugs and I'm just misusing the tools. But at any rate, at some point, I'll talk about this with Joel and Sam or with somebody who knows it better than I do. The same thing happens in percent WFUT. I can't get it to 100% coverage because it's excluding the subroutine it is currently running in order to produce the coverage report, which is disappointing. But anyway, we're doing pretty well. Um, there are several other bodies of code that, that additionally need to have unit tests written for them. One of them is SAMI, which is the actual Vista application itself. Uh, one of them is percent %wd, which is the graph store uh, toolkit, which all of this is built upon. And then there's some percent %yada tools, um, which whose fate is yet to be determined as we as we get further and further into this. So, so at this point, I will turn away from my less visual part of the presentation, and we will go to somebody more visual than me, who's been working on things we can look at. We thought we would start by having um, George uh, show what he's been up to and then we'll culminate in, in having Dom show what he's been up to. So take it away, George. But there you go. Uh -oh. Got to find your share screen button. He says, I'm looking for my share screen button. Don't rush me. There it is. All right, can you guys see my screen? We can. All right, great. Uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, uh, the classic LCAP screens um, processed through our uh, the processed on Vista, essentially. Um, so this is the the home home page, and again, the difference between this and the LCAP system is that they um, they have another couple of rows on the home page that deal with functions that we are not implementing right now and may or may not be needed with Vista being integrated with Vista. I mean, with uh, LCAP being, with, with the application as integrated with Vista, we don't know. So, but the, so, so we redact those. We, we uh, the way this works is this, that we actually use their template, but the code uh, that we write uh, redacts the pieces we're not using and just doesn't show them. So um, what we have here is the ability to create a new patient in the LCAP system. Um, and uh, this is a new patient that's going to be eligible for uh, the, the, the uh, lung cancer screening program. So um, let's see, we have to give it a, um, uh, let's see, a, uh, uh, Tomcat. You have to give it a first name and a last name, and then you press uh, new case. And what happens is that uh, a uh, a uh, the system assigns a uh, study ID for that new patient, and then um, and then generates uh, the prefills uh, an intake form and a background form. Every every patient gets an intake form and a background form, and the um, 
and we can take a look at, let's say, the intake form. And you notice on the intake form, the uh, study ID is up here, the name of the patient's here, and the um, and the uh, name is filled out. Uh, certain fields in the, in the form are filled out. Uh, the study ID and the name and primarily here. Uh, there's um, some hope that uh, we'll be able to, when we connect to VISTA, we'll be able to pull out things like the patient contact information, maybe the physician contact information, if we can figure out which physician should be. Um, actually, oh, this will only require for non-VA physicians. So anyway, maybe we, maybe we can figure out who this is, but there's probably multiple people in VISTA listed as part of the care team for the patient. So I'm not sure we'll be able to do that. Um, given uh, date of birth, probably can do date of birth, parent, maybe the parents and social security number, uh, parents, emergency contacts, maybe. Maybe those things can be pulled out of VISTA. We'll have to see. Uh, but anyway, so we did populate, repopulate some things in this, this form. Then from here, we, uh, you can, of course, use the form and fill it out, uh, or you can return to case review, and you can go to the background form. And the background form, similarly, is, uh, is tailored for this patient. And, um, and uh, this, these, this is a, a place where we should be able to pull things from VISTA. I don't know about occupation, sex we should be able to do, height and weight maybe, and the uh, BMI should be computed, race, ethnicity, if they're in VISTA, ought to be able to be pulled. All right, so that's, um, these are the, uh, all right, return to case review. Okay, so um, then um, a new feature, uh, let's say that, you filled out the intake form, the background form, and the patient gets a scan, and it's a C so you need to have a new form, which is the CT evaluation form. So you press that, you create the new form, and it uh, and it did that. It, it basically generates a uh, you know it generates a piece of the graph, which is represents the creation of a new form, prepopulates pre with with things like name and study ID, and then put you into the uh, classic uh, CT evaluation form, which is a, a, a substantial form. So um, let's see. And if we go, uh, if we return to the case review, we notice that the CT evaluation form exists, and it's uh, dated with today's date. Uh, and uh, of course, you can go, go back to see it here. Uh, so. The um, if we return home, the new feature since I demoed this yesterday is you're able to uh, to select um, the patient by um, uh, let's see what zero zero no zero zero one four I think it was oops let's see yeah so you're able to type in the uh, the case ID of the patient and get them. And if you don't want to type in the X-axis, you can type in one four and get there. And or yeah, any other patient, one two. Uh, ooh, that's interesting. Something like that. Huh, I always may have a bug. See one four. And one four worked. Huh. One. One works. We okay. may be yeah, so two works. Well, I will go look and see uh why we 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 should we should be maybe some have gotten deleted on here. Three works. That's possible. Anyway, four. So that's uh, that is what I had to show. This is, this is the classic interface um, to do. Yeah, we're gonna we have to do the pending forms, uh, and then we have to do the. Uh, we would like to be able to type in the name of a patient who is in the Vista system here, and do uh, do a matchup, uh, and be able to uh, to tie a uh, LCAP patient to a Vista Vista patient 
and then uh, use that connection to pull in um, data as I described about the patients and to populate the forms. And we want to get the code that runs this to run with uh, DOMS forms, which he's going to show you in that. Um, that's what I had to show. If there's any questions, if there's no questions, we'll uh, segue over to Dom. He can show you the new forms, which we're in the, pro we're, we're in the process of trying to integrate with. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Okay, let's segue over to Dom then. Dom, if you want to share your screen. Yeah, how do I do that? <laughs> Under the um, quick start menu. Quick start, oh, there's a share screen button. Gotcha. Ah! All right, super. All right, so um, like like George and uh, everybody were saying here, I've been working on these enhanced forms um, over the last few weeks. Uh, we started off with the background form, and since then I've done this home page that you're seeing here. Um, we also have the start of the case review page, uh, the intake form, uh, the new form form, um, which I'll, I'll get to, and also the CT evaluation form. Um, so I've been trying to keep things mostly in line with how the LCAP system is designed. Um, but at the same time, keeping up with uh, some of the things George has been doing. So, uh, for example, here on the on this home page, we have the new case section. Uh, we just have a simple text box where at some point you'll be able to put in a, a name and just kind of do a lookup and, and get into your intake form and background form and whatnot. Um, but if you had seen some of these before, at least the background form, uh, we talked about uh, responsive web design, uh, Section uh, 508 compliance, uh, which is handicap accessible uh, web pages. Um, and these, uh, although I haven't formally run them through any tests to, to prove it, uh, they should be fairly uh, well suited to, to those requirements. Uh, so just as an example, with, this is probably a very simple one um, with the home page here. Uh, as we start making this page smaller and smaller, uh, things start bouncing around and, you know, expanding to fit the container and, and whatnot. Um, so that works on all the different pages here. Uh, so from th this, this page is pretty simple uh, at the moment, although in the future I think we'll be adding some uh, some graphs, uh, other other pieces of information about the site that this is going to be installed onto, uh, things like how many rural veterans we're hitting and, and so on. Uh, but for now, it's it's just pretty simple. Um, and uh, unless there's any questions on the home page here, I'm going to jump into some of the more uh, interesting forms. Uh, so this is this is just basic HTML. It's it's not tied into Vista right now. So a lot of what I'm doing is is mostly hard coded. Uh, so for example, I'm not going to type anything in the search key here. Uh, but if we hit submit, the idea is that you would find that person or find that case and come into this case review page. Uh, I, I took the liberty of making a couple minor adjustments to how uh, the LCAP Classic looks. Um, for example, I think I might even have it up here somewhere. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, well, you can't see it here, but basically each one of these form types had uh, a preview icon over here which basically got you to that form. Um, I took that a little bit differently and made the form type a link. So for each one of these, you can get to each form just by clicking on the on the name of the type here. Um, so that, that kind of makes our action column just a little bit more um, less cluttered. So here we just have a, it's another simple one, um, this new form button. Um, come into here, you can pick which one you want to do and uh, get into that, that page. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, so don't, don't take too much attention to the CT evaluation form just yet. Just kind of jump around a little bit. Um, so yeah, so we, we have, uh, like we said, the background form, the intake form, and the CT evaluation form all pretty much coded. 
intake form should look um, fairly similar to the LCAP form. Um, all the validation rules are in here, all the required fields, conditionally required fields, uh, that, that's all set up here. So for example, if we pick one of these that says specify, we're going to be forced to put something in here. If you say something that's not, um, then it's uh, disabled. Um, similarly, if you know th these would become enabled if uh, certain fields are checked off. Um, although I'd, I'm not sure how far we've uh, decided on the design here, but for now, um, the idea is that if you're looking at a patient, um, well, the access to their forms would be here in this drop-down menu. Uh, you know, again, we haven't really gotten a, a, a yay or nay on that kind of design, but for now it's here. Um, so I was on the intake form, but you could either, either easily bounce to the background form or the CT evaluation form. And since we've looked at the background one before, uh, I'm just going to go into the uh, CT evaluation form. So this is um, a really, really long page. You can kind of tell by the, the scroll bar over here how long it is. And, uh, it, you know, it's it's huge. <laughs> um, but all the fields are here. Um, I have a little bit more work to do to uh, tie up all the conditionally required fields and whatnot. Um, but that should be done uh, hopefully this week. Uh, we've also talked a little bit about taking this entire page and tabifying it, much like the background form. Uh, so just in case you haven't seen it in a while, uh, with the background form, we've kind of broke it up into separate sections. So we have uh, CT order, medical history, and so on. And uh, if this were tied to a system, it would actually give you little icons in each tab uh, indicating whether or not you, were, you had completed all the required fields in that uh, section, uh, which is beneficial for the uh, nurse navigator. Um, I think we're going to do the same thing for the CTL evaluation form simply because it's really long. Um, right now, I think the proposed tabs would be basically this, this background information, uh, study date, you know, radiologist, and whatnot, um, followed by the nodule information, uh, which again is very big, and then going into uh, some of the abnormalities. We have one tab for all abnormalities and uh, broken down into sections inside of there for you know, cardiac abnormalities. There's one for uh, neck. There's another one for breast abnormalities and so on. And then I think there are going to be other tabs for follow-up, um, impression information, and the image quality scale. Um, so that's all coming in the next week or so, along with, uh, I believe, the next form on my list anyway is the uh, intervention form. Yes. And, uh, so that'll be coming in the next uh, week, hopefully. Uh, but uh, as Rick kind of alluded to, we're very much looking forward to integrating these into a VISTA system so that there's actually some data behind it and functionality so we can throw some, some of our even existing unit tests that we developed a uh, month ago against these same forms and, and see how they perform. So I think that's it for me. Um, any questions? Looks beautiful, Dom. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's All nice right. to see this stuff actually becoming something we can look at. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's interesting to look back over the course of these calls to the first call and where we were at when we began and, and how far it's come now. Uh, there are times when we're when we're in the trenches working on it when it seems like it's taken a long time to move, and then one day you look up and you're like, "Whoa, <laughs> okay, look at all this stuff that's working." <laughs> so it's a it's a pleasure. So did anybody else have something they want to report? Okay, and no questions. It sounds like and. So what we're doing next, I think uh, we talked about that as you guys were showing stuff. So anything we want to add about what we're doing next? So yeah, so um, George and I were, well, I'll, we've been working in parallel, uh, George and Dom and I for, and, and, and everybody else on the team over the over the past month. But the, I mentioned George in particular because George and I have been working in parallel on, on the back end. And our work's been overlapping. So we reconciled one overlap uh, last week. 
and then um, George did some more work um, last night <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm folding in right now. I'm just about done, and I'm about to submit it to the repository. Um, but the work that was done last week, his work, his work all all worked, but not all of mine worked. I managed to I managed to break the processing of the classic background form. Uh, the newer form, the mock-up that Ken put together for us, seems to work fine in our, our merged form processor, but something about um, Artit's form threw it for a loop. So as soon as I finish um, saving George's work from last night, I'm going to start the, the troubleshooting process and find out where I, uh, uh, where I derailed the train a little bit. Once I've fixed that, which I hope is today or tomorrow, uh, my next area of focus is going to be working very closely with Dom, kind of going through his his forms field by field and seeing how the form processor handles them. And any of them it doesn't handle correctly, we'll upgrade it so that it does. So this is where it's going to, Dom's work is, is already visually exciting. It, it's going to start getting some real meat behind it when it's talking to the back end and saving, you know, when you can enter data into them and save them in the back end and have it come back up the next time you come to the form. And uh, all of that work is about to begin this week. So I, I suspect by this time next week, our call next week is going to be full of excitement and goodness as well. So uh, so that's uh, that's what's next on my plate. Well, and I'm just going to work on more unit tests. So that's been fun. Much more fun than bookkeeping, which is what I'm stuck on today. Anybody else want to report? Uh, let's see. I owe George some instructions about connecting CPRS or, <clears throat> yeah, connecting CPRS to um, <clears throat> one of these Docker instances, and then uh, it's back to patient lookup. Awesome. Alexis, could you share that with the whole group, actually, when, when you have that written up? I will, yeah. Great, thanks. Okay. So um, unless anybody has anything else, I think we can call that a wrap. Lovely. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day, everyone. I will uh, try to get this up on YouTube fairly quickly so that people who missed it can see it. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.